The orchestra light from Kiwi Ears is an IEM that's meant to mimic the sound of a $500 flagship orchestra model, but at a much lower price of $250. How did they make an in-ear monitor that's supposed to be almost as good as its two times more expensive predecessor, and how well does it perform? Please leave a like on the video and let's check it out. It's a fairly large IEM, looking at the shell itself. It has very smooth edges, and the outside part doesn't feel weird in any way. However, because of the crossover and the amount of drivers in there, the nozzle had to be extra thick. That's something you can definitely feel in your ears, and it makes the orchestra light seem even larger than it actually is. Unless you find that to be a massive issue, it should be fairly comfortable despite its size. It's a gorgeous inner monitor. It has semi-transparent enclosure, exposing the drivers and other internal components. As far as I'm aware, some part of the assembly is being handmade by a human, as it's so tricky to do by a machine. There are a few faceplate colors to pick from. I've got the blue one, but you can also get it in green, purple, orange or clear colorways. The stock cable is of a very nice quality. I wouldn't even bother replacing it. It's a 4-core, 7 and oxygen-free copper construction that's nicely braided and terminated with a decent metal 3.5mm connector. In the box, you're also getting a small rectangular carrying case, ideal for transporting or storage. It can fit an extra dongle if you so desire. The Orchestra Light builds on the success of the original Orchestra model, offering the same 8 balanced amateur driver configuration with enhanced efficiency and cost effectiveness. Those drivers are custom made for Kiwi ears to achieve superior performance while maintaining the same specifications as the older model. They are divided using a 3-way crossover, 2 custom ultra tweeters for precise treble, 4 balanced amateur mid-range drivers for clear mids, and two subwoofer drivers for deep, resonant lows. BA drivers are generally not very capable of playing full range signals. That's why we rarely see single balanced amateur IEMs. A simple solution to that problem is to either use multiple BAs or combine them with some other type of driver to get a nice, full range signal. These drivers can work in harmony to produce a balanced, natural sound that honestly reproduces the original audio source. You can subscribe to my channel if you're still watching. The impedance of this IEM is 16 ohms. It's quite low. The sensitivity on the other hand comes at 112 decibels. Extremely high. It's not sensitive to source quality either, so you don't have to worry about it that much. The only thing that can be a problem is the sensitivity being so high that some cheap, low-quality amps can pass through some hiss. This noise, despite usually not being a problem, is likely to be heard with so efficient IEMs. Initially, the overall tuning seemed more or less neutral to my ears, but the more time I spent with it, the more I realized that it puts a fairly strong emphasis on the mid-range. It means that the bass and treble are slightly tamed down, but not to the point of sounding flat or boring. It makes it neutral, but with an audible sense of warmth. I would consider it a good thing, as the midrange itself is done in a very pleasant way. It sounds realistic, detailed, and is not messed up in any way. The bass amount is good. It isn't bloated, sloppy, or boomy, but it has some roll-off as you get to the real sub-sub bass. Speaking of bass impact and dynamics, it's a relaxed IEM. That seems like it's meant to make you chill out while listening to music, instead of hitting you super hard. The treble, on the other hand, is clarity-focused, offers lots of crunchiness in the top-end frequency sounds, and usually stays fairly clean. It accomplishes that without ever getting overly bright or sibilant. The detail retrieval appears to vary from song to song, going from just fine to very good. I think it has to do a lot with the mid-forward frequency response. The special effects are quite interesting here. 
pretty much the opposite of what every other product in this price range is trying to achieve. The soundstage width is somewhat limited, making the sound boundaries not super far off. Usually IEMs don't go super far, but this one is even more closed in. However, the depth dimension is definitely present and well defined. And I'm surprised that it does it so well. You can easily tell when a sound source is brought forward or back. And it's a pleasant effect. The sound here is not just a wall in front of you. Let me know in the comments down below whether sound depth is important to you or not. The imaging is also outstanding for an IEM in this price range. It's sharp, focused and precise, making instruments have a distinct place where they are placed. So should you buy it? I think it offers great value and good technical performance in most aspects. Personally, I like how it sounds and even more how it looks.